Now, have you ever wondered what you'd do if you ruled the world? What laws would you change? What would you do differently? Well, every week, we like to ask a famous figure exactly that. And this week, it's the turn of her stylist to the stars, Nikki Clark. So, Nikki, welcome to the church show. So, imagine Hi. if you rule the world, what's the first thing you would do? Uh, I, mean, I mean, I had so many of these things, but they all sound very kind of like sort of nothing in yet. I mean, I had things like, you know, like oh, should my... Um, should all high streets become pedestrianised? I mean, I'm in St John's Wood and they've pedestrianised it. I thought, my God, this is great, you know. I mean, I'm trying to think of the downside of, you know, maybe access, people with disabilities maybe. But then I'm thinking, you know, if all of the roads near there, why aren't every single uh, uh, high street, you know, you're literally just pedestrianised? You know, we get rid of cars. And then I sort of thought, about things like, well, I should be, should be making everybody have their hair done every week, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, everything, I... everything, everything looks great. You know? I thought that's why you'd have a pedestrianised zone. Your hair would be a nightmare every day if everywhere was pedestrianised and you were walking exactly. everywhere in the world. So there was, there was, exactly. he was thinking about that. Yeah. 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 So everybody should get their hair done. <laughs> Look fabulous all the time. Is that what yeah, it is? I think, you know, and I think it's quite serious. I mean, the point is, how wonderful will everybody look all the time? You, you, it's compulsory. You've got to go and have your hair a blow dry or, you know, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> if, a bit if, like look, you, Esther. You never thank you, you very much. Thank time. you very much. See the way you said a bit like you, <laughs> Esther, and not you, know, Philip. No, no, no. If, the, if there was a law for looking fabulous, <laughs> I'd be breaking it every day of the week. I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, now you've never, but you've never fancied uh, ever going into a sort of politics or, or anything like that. No, always hairdressing was always for you. Do you know what? It's so funny. I mean, I'm kind of blessed in this job, and you wouldn't really believe it, but I actually have a huge interest in politics. And I have sat in um, Parliament before, the way, <laughs> certainly the way you have. And I've actually done a number of things. But there was a point, I think I did, I think I did the pol uh, political show on the BBC once, and, um, and I think my uh, business partner said, do you know what? It might be better if you just drop the politics stuff. I mean, it was actually when Scotland were... Um, uh, you know, talking about the, you know, the first referendums. And I actually was in support of them staying within the union. And I didn't say anything other than, you know, pretty much that, actually. Oh, my God. I mean, thank God I'm not on social media that much because the vitriol that comes with it just is, you know, not something that you would, you know, you're always going to upset somebody. I mean, it, it probably didn't help when I said something like it's all getting a bit brave heart. So that kind of was the, you know, the, the, the thing that sort of got them going a bit. But anyway, it's like, so, so yes, I do have a huge interest in it, but I probably tend to try and stay as neutral as possible. And I think, you know, in these mad times, oh, my God, I mean, I think anybody that sticks their head above the parapet is going to get kind of, you know, shot down. But it is interesting, actually, because I did do Margaret Thatcher's hair in the 80s. I was summoned to do, you know, uh, for uh, a portrait for Vogue. And it's actually the one that's hanging up in the... Um, in the National Gallery now. And um, I remember before going, I come from a fairly um, kind of labor orientated uh, family then. I mean, my brother and I are probably not that now, but um, I remember my sister being kind of, you know, very uh, sort of, oh God, you know, stick the scissors in her and all of that kind of stuff. And, and actually it was very interesting because my sister is a very um, um, a sort of famous writer. And, and she was asked to, um, uh, make a comment on the on the Thatcher trilogy books recently, and so she actually read all of them in order to get a kind of perspective. And you could see the dilemma that she was in because here was somebody who she has never ever supported, but yet could see the problems that a woman faced. You know, certainly being um, surrounded by kind of Etonians all the time. So I think she was starting to have a, a little bit more compassion for her than she might have had before. But, but you know, generally my, you know, my politics sort of tend to be, you know, pretty centre. Um, you know, yes, I, you know, Tory voter, but of course I actually have certain times when I think, no, I think the, the sort of the, the, the more liberal socialist side of capitalism in some way is really what probably is, is the best way forward, somewhere in the middle. I don't really want to be too far left or right, I think. Yeah. So